Hey guys, it's Gaz. Welcome to the Warframe video. So sorry I'm a little bit late today. I actually forgot that uh, Nightwave reset today, so we're getting this out a few hours after the challenges have reset, but you don't really care about that. We're just here for some tips and tricks, as usual. So here we go. I have taken a look at these, and I've been hearing some stuff that my clanmates have been saying. Uh, apparently, um, there's some of them, some of these challenges are bugged right now, guys. There's people saying that the uh, index weekly elite weekly is not working and apparently the uh, There are some other ones not working too. this one the sound sleeper complete three nightmare missions Apparently it's bugged and not working currently. So just keep that in mind when I'm giving you these suggestions. Okay So let's go over the first Weekly challenge. So we have find all the caches in three sabotage missions. So the caches in sabotage missions are uh, these special boxes that like have a sound effect um, when you get close to them. So what I'm going to recommend, guys, is that you go to either the Earth Sabotage Mission called Cervantes, or you go to the Eris Sabotage Mission. Well, it's actually called Hive. It's called Hive Mission on, on Eris. Um, I don't know if that will count, but um, those two missions, um, those are my go-to, like, uh, cache-finding missions. Um, I, I do hope that Naglar does count, because that actually is a pretty good farm for the Shell Shock mod for... Shotguns, also the high voltage mod for rifles. So, yeah, I'm like 99% sure that one's going to count, guys. But um, if it doesn't count, I'm actually going to do that right after this video. If it doesn't count, I'll put it in the uh, the comments, okay? So, yeah, Cervantes Earth, Naglar Eris. Uh, turn your game music down and then turn the sound effects up if you really want to try hard. Uh, and that will make it so the sound effects of those caches being hidden in the level will be much louder and easier to hear. Um because they do have a distinct sound, and um, usually when you hear that sound effect, that means they're behind some, like, wall or something. You need to find a way to break open the uh, the wall and get to those uh, those caches. Okay, so, yeah. Cervantes and Naglar. My suggestions for that first one. All right, so we got the second challenge. We got Earth Fisher. So you got to catch six rare fish in the Plains of Eidolon. So I think we actually had this one last week, so this is just a repeat of last week. And the same thing stands as I said last week. Catch mercury fish. That's the easiest one to get the rare bait for. Uh, mercury fish are caught in like the sea, so the edges of the map, and you do need bait to catch them. Also, you need to find like the bubbles in the water, like they're called hot spots. Um, throw the mercury bait into the hot spot, and it will start spawning mercury fish. I did this last week, and um, you can share the bait, by the way. So I had I had two people in my squad. I threw the one bait, and everybody was able to catch all the fish they needed from one bait throw. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you have somebody in your clan or your, your friend or whatever that has the mercury bait, ask them to share it uh, with you if you do not have access to that yet, because it does take some rep to get to that. Um, additionally, guys, uh, this is a real tip for fishing. If you are doing fishing on the Plains of Eidolon, use the Volt Warframe if you have him, because his passive ability, if you run back and forth a little bit, it builds up an electrical charge. And when you throw the fishing spear with the Volt, uh, no matter which fishing spear it is, if he has his electrical charge passive uh, up, it will actually one-shot the fish and do a ton of damage. So that makes fishing with Volt really easy. It doesn't work as well uh, for the Fortuna fish, so I'm just going to recommend you use Volt for the uh, Plains of Eidolon fish. Okay, so Mercury for that one. Share bait with friends. It's pretty easy if, if someone has bait. They don't really spawn reliably at all with, without bait, so I wouldn't recommend that. All right, complete five scans for Cephalon Samaris. So I think this is very tedious. I, I'm not really a big fan of this. I don't like scanning things for Samaris at all. Um, but yeah, if you don't have access to this yet, uh, go talk to the big orange guy on the second floor in the relay. And yeah, you can do a daily synthesis target for him. I think it's like three scans per day uh, to like complete his mission. So this might take two days. You might be able to like cheese it and abandon the, uh, the scan at two and then like re-grab it from him. But I'm not going to recommend that. Like, might as well get something for your time. And um, you do get Cephalon Samaris rep for completing his daily. So, yeah. I'd say just go uh, do this over two days. Get three scans one day. And then finish off the second one on the second day to get to five. All right. So, yeah. The way that these work, by the way, if he if his synthesis target is like a MOA, like, and you just need to go scan a MOA, what you do is you go to a mission that a MOA will normally spawn in. And there's a special MOA hidden in that level. That um, if you take out the synthesis scanner, it'll actually show a trail to it most of the time. And you need to go scan that MOA, don't kill it, with the synthesis scanner. It has like three weak points on it that will only show up when you have the scanner out. 
Scan all three of those, the MOA becomes captured, and you get reputation. So you do that three times, and that's uh, the daily completed. Okay, so let's move on from that. And we got complete the sortie. So uh, after the War Within quest is completed, you have access to the sortie mission. So yeah, if you don't have very good gear for this, guys, which I know a lot of people have been saying is the problem with them doing sorties, uh, you can honestly like try to roll the dice in public matchmaking, even if you don't have a super uh, good setup. And a lot of times people will just carry other players. Like whenever I go in public, I don't. No, that's not fair. I don't always carry people, but like if someone's like MR like six and they have like not the best gear equipped, it's not like I'm gonna be like, oh look at this scrub, like he can't even kill stuff. Because for one, if you're playing Excalibur, you can actually kill stuff in the sortie, no problem. And two, like I just don't play the game like that. If anyone's toxic to you in in uh, public matchmaking, you can just click the ignore button on their name, dudes. It, it you. There's so many players, you're not going to see them very often. So, like, don't really worry about it. If someone's being toxic, you just just ignore them and move on with your day, okay? Um, don't let people be elitist scum to you because you don't got to put up with that. But, yeah, that's me on a tangent right there. Uh, just do public matchmaking for the sortie. If it's spy, you might want to do it solo and just get good at spy missions. But uh, that's basically it. All right, so this is the one people are saying might be bugged right now. So complete three nightmare missions of any type. So what a nightmare mission, guys, is is you complete every single mission on a certain planet. So, for example, I did every single mission on Earth. It's all They're all completed. I got the mastery points for completing them. After that's done, once every eight hours, a nightmare version of a mission on Earth will appear. Um, and then, like, once every eight hours, it can be any mission. So it could be, like, the interception. And then it gives you a modifier, which is, like, either no shields, energy drain. There's a, there's a few modifiers, but the main ones are, like, no shields and energy drain. Um... And then that will appear once every eight hours. You can complete that once per that eight hours, and then it will go on cooldown. Um, so, like, if you do that for every single planet in the game, that's, like, a ton of nightmare missions you have access to. So as long as you have uh, a couple plants fully cleared, this should be... You should be able to complete this in, like, ten minutes if you get, like, some really fast nightmare missions. Because, like I said, they choose a random mission on the planet. So it could be a capture mission. It could be a defense mission. It could be whatever. Um... So I would just suggest doing the captures and the exterminates for that one. The easy stuff, that's not going to take you very long. Um, and yeah, this should be very simple, as long as you have access to those Nightmare Missions, which every player does, by the way, um, as long as you've completed the prerequisites. Also, you get a guaranteed mod for completing these, which is pretty nice. I, use, I used to sell those all the time. All right, complete 10 Syndicate Missions. So I actually have a good tip for you guys on this one, and that is that your teammates you can get taxi to their syndicate missions, and those also count. So this will make this actually a lot faster if you want to cheese it. So um, normally I only do like two or three syndicate missions a day, if that. Um, but if if I have like a teammate that's got an exterminate syndicate mission up too, and I already did my easy syndicate missions for that day, why not just join him on his syndicate mission and get some more progress towards this? Because when the last time this one came up, guys, it took me like four days because I wasn't really like trying to go out of my way to complete it, but if you really want to like go out of your way to complete this immediately, you can go with your teammates on their syndicate missions. You won't get the reputation for completing it, like, as far as their syndicate's concerned, but you will get the progress towards this uh, this weekly, as long as DE has not patched that since I, I tried it last. Okay, so we got a couple more. Uh, complete three ways of Sanctuary Onslaught. Like I said, talk to the orange guy in the relay. This is unlocked to you after the new Strange quest is completed, and this is a really good place to level... Uh, Warframes and weapons, so yeah, throw it on public matchmaking if you want to. Uh, you can honestly just do the first wave three times over if you really didn't want to try hard, uh, but maybe you want to level some stuff up and get uh, some use out of your time there. So I'd, I'd suggest throwing on public matchmaking, having some fun, killing lots of enemies. This is a uh, place where lots of enemies spawn, so it's pretty fun. And now we get into our first weekly, and this one might be pretty hard for some people. So win three wagers in a row without letting the enemy score in one match of the index. So, um, a couple tips we got for you here, guys. First off, if you don't have the Index, it's on Neptune, and it's literally called the Index. There's three levels to it. There's low risk, medium risk, and high risk. So, those risk things basically determines the starting level of the enemies and how hard they're going to be. Also, how many points it takes to win. So, if you want to, like, mega cheese this, do it as easy as possible, I'm going to suggest low, uh, low risk Index, so the enemies are at the lowest level. It takes the lowest amount of points to win. And I'm also gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna recommend that you bring a team comp like the one I'm about to uh, discuss right now. So you're gonna want one kind of frame that can block the goalpost for the enemies. Um, so we're talking like an Atlas, a Gara, a Limbo, 
uh, frames of that nature. Things like they can make the enemies not able to run into the score post and get any points off. Two, you're going to want a person that picks up the points. So Gara can kind of do that. Um, but the main frame that you're going to want for picking up the points is Rhino. So the reason Rhino is really good for this is when you pick up a bunch of points in Index, the more you're holding, the lower your health becomes. But the thing with Rhino is he doesn't really care about his health points. He cares about his iron skin. So um, you can hold like a ton of points with Rhino and have like two health, but you have like 500,000 iron skin or whatever the heck it is. And yeah, those enemies aren't going to kill you. You can have two health for all you care. It doesn't even matter. Um, so he's the point picker upper guy. Uh, three, you're probably going to want a DPS to just like insta-gun down those uh, enemies that are holding the points. So Duality Equinox really good if you have a good build. Uh, Mesa really good uh, with an okay build. And there's other frames too that can do that kind of situation. Uh, my main two are Equinox uh, with a Duality build and Mesa though. Just because they have really good scaling damage. And then the fourth frame... If you really want to be lazy, guys, you can bring in a slow Nova that's going to have a bunch of enemy radar on and a bunch of duration and 145% power strength. That's going to slow the enemies down to a crawl, so you can just have a really easy time just uh, destroying them and taking their points uh, like the little kids with candy. Uh, yeah, so make sure they don't score for three rounds in a row. So you need to click uh, Stay Invested uh, twice, so go to three waves and have the enemy score zero points at all, guys. So good luck with that. I don't really go very far in the index normally, but um, this will be a reason to do it, which is one of the things I like about Nightwave. It makes you do things you don't normally do. Okay, so that's basically the one that's going to take the most explanation here out of anything. Um, but yeah, just don't let the enemies score. I, you could put Atlas's walls up with his augment mod to completely make it so the enemies can't score, and it's really funny. All right, let's keep moving on. So complete a level f or complete a defense mission reaching at least level forty. While, or wave 40 while playing with a friend or clanmate. So I really don't like this one. I think this is very tedious. I find defense missions very long and boring in most cases. Um, but do uh, do notice how they're saying it doesn't need to be a high-level defense mission to start. So if you really want to, you could go to a low-level defense mission on, like, Earth, Mars, wherever, and go to wave 40 with a friend or clanmate, and this will complete the challenge, no problem. Uh, I would recommend, like, a COD, honestly, like, in my opinion... I'm going to do a COD for this one, uh, the Infested Defense Mission on Eris, because I think the Infested are a giant joke, and a COD has a pretty good enemy flow, usually. Um, so yeah, if you really want to cheese this, guys, bring a Speed Nova to make the enemies go faster, bring a Defense Objective Warframe like Korra, uh, Gara, Frost, etc., and um, yeah, just make the enemies run really fast, have a DPS to kill them too, and you'll be done with this in no time. This isn't exactly challenging, it's just tedious in my opinion, so yeah. Also, make sure you have a... If you're in this and like you've committed to doing this with like some people from recruiting chat, uh, hit them with a friend request and make sure they accept it before you complete this mission. Because, uh, yeah, you do need to have a friend or a clanmate to complete this mission. And then the final one, kill three Silver Grove Spectres. Never mind, I forgot this one existed. Okay, so this one is actually the most tedious of them all. So, first off, to make a Grove Spectre appear, you need to have completed the Silver Grove quest... Um, or you need to have someone in your team that has completed the Silver Grove quest that you will be leeching an Apothic off of. So what an Apothic is, let's actually quickly go over what that is, because I'm at my foundry. So the Silver Grove quest has some steps in it where you create these um, these plant species things, where the heck they are. Um, and these make a special enemy spawn in a hidden shrine in Earth missions that you need to seek out and find. Um, you'll definitely know what it is when you find it. It's like... There's like a waterfall in this like hidden room and there's like a pile of rocks. If you go to that pile of rocks and you put one of these apothics into it that is fully constructed and in your gear wheel, it will make a special enemy spawn that actually can drop exclusive mods. So, um, for example, this Nightfall Apothic, which is the one I'm going to recommend to you guys, uh, this guy, he can drop the Growing Power mod. He can also drop the Pistol Amp mod, which are both really good aura mods for um, lots of Warframes. Um, I definitely recommend growing power on lots of frames. Uh, it can give you like even more power strength. But the bottom line here, guys, is to start this Silver Grove quest, you need to go to the relay and talk to New Loka, who are the for like the, they're like the forest people. Um, I think they're in the very far left room on most relays, and the very far right room on the Earth relay because that one's flipped. If you didn't know that, that one's just flipped like on on top of itself. So um, yeah, you get one of these. The way you build these, you scan a ton of plants. So you pull out your synthesis scanner in a mission. Can I do it here. I can't. So either the synthesis scanner or the codex scanner, you pull that out, it puts your gun away, and you go find the plant, and you right-click and then left-click to scan it. 
Um, once you scan enough of those, you will have um, the ingredients you need to complete this apothic. Um, so yeah, you need to do that three times. What I'm going to definitely recommend to you guys is that you get in a squad for this one. So go into recruiting chat, get like two or three more people who are also using these kind of apothics, and you can farm this with them. You can also bring a Necros and a Hydroid and get the, the one enemy to drop like four mods. It's really funny, um, but it's also very profitable. So for, cause, for example, Growing Power goes for like, I think it's like 70 to like 90 Platinum. When, last time I sold them, that's how much they were. And we were getting like four per run, guys. So that's a lot of platinum if you get lucky, which you have to get lucky for, obviously. Um, but yeah, so I have three apothics right here. I'm actually pretty happy about that because I don't need to uh, grind any more plants. But um, yeah, if you want to like get some plant out of your time, make sure you do the Nightfall Apothic because this is the one that drops growing power. Okay, and that's it, guys. Um, sorry this is a little bit late. Sorry if it's a little bit long, but some of these require a good amount of explanation in my point, or in my opinion. So yeah, um... Thanks for checking out the channel as always. A limbo video coming in the very near future. I was a little bit sick over the weekend. I also had some family in town from out of the country. So I wanted to make sure I hung out with them because I don't see them very often. So yeah, um, I hope that these all don't bug out for you guys. Like I've been hearing they've been bugging out for other people. And yeah, I'm going to be grinding these challenges too, guys. So I'll see you very soon. Please like, share, subscribe, and have a nice night. Peace.